Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides mid-patch update video. My name is Dan and today I'll be going over all the strongest champions using fresh statistics to give you the best and most accurate tier lists available. We encourage all our viewers to comment on these lists and say if you agree or disagree with us on specific champion placements. There were a ton of major changes made since the start of patch 10.3 and our analysts and partnered pro players are so excited to bring you the updated list. And today's question of the day is what rank are you right now and what rank do you want to be? Let us know your answers down in the comments below. And are you getting ganked in your own lane? Constantly demolished? Don't worry, we got you covered. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Night Blue, Bunny Foo Foo, Box Box, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and start improving right now. All right, with that all being said, let's jump into the video. Starting with the top lane. The top lane tier list sees a lot of major changes in our mid-patch update. Firstly, in the S plus tier, we have three members who are Soraka, Mordekaiser, and we welcome back Set to the S plus roster. Although he did receive a lot of nerfs during the start of the patch, it appears that he remains almost unaffected by these changes. His ability to demolish almost every single melee champion in the game is still intact, and he has very few counters in the 1v1. Soraka, on the other hand, is still the strongest top laner in the game and is continuing to wreak havoc in both solo queue and professional play. There isn't a single top laner in the game who can beat a Soraka 1v1 due to her ability to peel, heal, and poke with just one ability. However, she is receiving some heavy nerfs within the next few weeks for patch 10.4, so abuse her while you can. This is one of the most free low picks in the meta right now, so don't miss out. Also, smash that sub button if you want to be notified of the confirmed nerfs that are coming to Soraka next week. We'll make sure to release a video on that as soon as we receive the information. Next up in the S tier, we have one new champion, which is Sona. The top lane meta is becoming stranger and stranger every time we look at the statistics. Sona top is pretty much like a Soraka 2.0, except she requires more mana during the laning phase and has less of a global presence. However, her damage is much higher than Soraka, so it's easier to get more solo kills. But the reason why Sona isn't placed on the same tier as Soraka is because she requires three spells to do what Soraka can do with one spell. Since Soraka can just press Q to heal, poke, and peel, she will never run out of mana. Sona, on the other hand, needs to Q, auto, W, and E to get those bonuses, so she runs out of mana very fast. And lastly, for the top lane, let's talk about Akali. So Akali received some heavy nerfs followed by some hotfix buffs at the start of patch 10.4. And things aren't looking too good for her. She started the patch with a 30% win rate, which is just insane, and then it rose to 36% and went up to 40% right now after the hotfix buffs. She's officially one of, if not the worst champion in the game right now, and you should avoid playing her at all costs. Akali is placed in the F tier for our mid-patch update. Moving on to the jungle. The jungle tier list sees a couple of changes in our mid-patch update. First up in the S plus tier, we have two members, which are Elise and Echo, and also have a champion combo, which is the Master Yi plus Taric funnel strat. Our analysts took this out of the S plus tier at the start of the patch because funneling did receive a heavy nerf. However, it appears that those changes were nowhere near enough to gut this broken boosting strat, and players are just abusing this to no end. Tarek's win rate in the mid lane did go down from 65% to 61%, but he's still the highest win rate mid laner in the game. So pick up a duo partner and continue playing this because it's inevitably going to get nerfed again. Also, let's talk a bit about Echo. He did receive a nerf to his passive damage to monsters at the start of the patch, but he's still broken in the jungle. He lost 50% of his damage to monsters, however, you have to keep in mind that he still does 150%, which is just insane. In addition to that, his numbers and cooldowns on his other abilities are just nuts, so this champion remains incredibly strong. The W is still an extremely long stun with a gigantic shield and essentially no mana cost. The Q is a low cooldown slow plus poking ability that does a ton of damage on the way back. His E does an insane amount of damage and his ultimate's cooldown is just way too short. Overall, Echo remains as a strong pick this patch and will continue to be this strong until future nerfs. In the S tier, we want to talk about one champion, which is Karthus. So at the start of the patch, jungle EXP got buffed by a decent amount and it's affected Karthus significantly. I've even seen Karthus players hit level 6 at 5 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Watch out for this pick guys, the play rate is really low on this champion, but he's sleeper OP right now. And lastly, in the jungle, let's talk about Trundle and Sejuani. 
These two champs received massive buffs at the start of the patch and are doing a lot better in the current meta. Trundle has finally become a relevant champion and part of it is because he acts as a counter to Sejuani who's been rising in popularity. Pros are going to be picking these two champions a lot during the next week and you should do the same during your solo queue games. Alright, that's it for jungle, let's run it down mid. The mid lane tier list sees a lot of major changes in our patch 10.3 update. Firstly, in the S plus tier, we have Diana, Fizz, and the same champion combo mentioned in the jungle section, which is Yi plus Taric. This funnel strat still works despite the nerfs it received and is really powerful. You should pick up a jungle duo and give this a try if you haven't already. Next up in the S tier, we have one new champion, which is Yasuo. So Yasuo has always been on the brink of making that push to S tier and has finally done so for patch 10.3. A champion with such high skill cap usually hovers around the 45-48% to 48 win rates, however in the Korean server he's managed to break over 50% with a whopping 10% pick rate. This is good indication that the meta is more suited towards Yasuo right now, so all the Yas mains should be very happy. Also in the mid lane section, let's talk about Akali. Much like the top lane tier list, Akali is once again placed in the mid lane F tier. Her win rate right now is at the 40% mark, so if you have her on your team, Chances are you'll likely lose. The nerfs hurt her way too hard, and this champion is just beyond bad right now. If you see someone lock her in, you might want to consider dodging because you'll lose 6 out of 10 times on average. I honestly think that Riot should consider reverting this champion because she's just had way too many balance issues. They've shown multiple times that they have no idea how to balance her, and the previous iteration had much less problems. Let us know what you guys think about the Akali changes in the comments down below, we want to hear your thoughts. Lastly in the mid lane, Rumble did receive a gigantic nerf in patch 10.3 but is still doing well in the mid lane. The pick is still viable but is weaker than what he was before. You can really feel the W nerfs so you'll want to be more careful when trading in those burst year matchups. However the burst is still there, the poking is still there, and the roaming is still there so you can continue to play Rumble in patch 10.3. All right, moving on to the ADCs. The ADC tier list sees a lot of changes compared to the one we had at the start of patch 10.3. First up in the S plus tier, we have three members who are Senna, Misfortune, and Aphelios. MF and Aphelios have made their way back into the S plus tier despite receiving some nerfs at the start of the patch. Those changes were nowhere near enough to push them from their S plus throne, and they remain as two of the strongest champions in the game. However, there is some good news. Aphelios is confirmed to receive some more nerfs in patch 10.4. A rioter did state that they want to nerf parts of his kit while also increasing the visual clarity of this champion. They'll make his ultimate more obvious and also add an icon for his secondary weapon next to his HP bar. This won't be enough to make Aphelios a balanced champion, but at least it doesn't hurt to have more visual clarity. In the S tier, we have five champions, which are Vayne, Ezreal, Lucian, Caitlyn, and Jinx. These five champions are very good picks for solo queue and will bring you great results. We recommend picking up a handful of these champs because they're only slightly weaker than the S plus tier, but have much lower play rates and ban rates. In the A tier, we see a lot of interesting changes. Last year during the World Championships, pretty much every single player was picking Kai'Sa or Zaya. However, in the current patch, their presence in the meta has gone down by a lot. They've been overshadowed by champions of Felios and Senna, who have much more broken things in their kit. Also, champs like Caitlyn, Vayne, Lucian, and Jinx all do decently well into Kai'Sa, which has brought down her win rate. And finally, let's go into the support section. The support tier list remains pretty similar to the one we had at the start of the patch, the meta has remained pretty similar to what we had last patch with the exception of a few picks making small moves in our tiers. In the S plus tier, we have the three usual picks, which are Leona, Nautilus, and Blitzcrank. Leona still remains in the S plus tier, just like our analysts predicted, because her strengths remain untouched this patch. Leona is still by far the best support pick in the game, and will bring you the best results. Nautilus follows as a close second due to his lockdown potential and tankiness. He does have a bit more reliable engage than Leona, but does a bit less damage. In the S tier, we want to talk about one pick which is Braum. Ever since his mini rework, Braum has been doing a lot better in the meta. We're beginning to see him more in pro play as well, which goes to show just how reliable and strong this pick is. We also mentioned a new Glacial Augment build for him in our OP Korean builds video, so make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Yumi received some hotfix buffs at the start of patch and has been moved into the A tier for support. There's still a lot of problems with her kit that haven't been addressed, but I do like the direction they're taking her. I think she'll be a much more balanced champion if they iron out a few more things, which is always a positive thing. 
And that's it for the mid-patch analysis video for patch 10.3. If you enjoyed watching the video, then please hit that like, comment, and subscribe button to be notified of our next vid. Also, be sure to check out ProGuys.com if you want to see huge improvements in your rank. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the Rift.